We don't have any swell. We don't have southern currents. So, yes, the water is clean enough to be reopened, and we're very happy. As we come on the air tonight, get this, you can jump in the water again in Imperial Beach for the first time in more than 1,000 days. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. I'm Marcella Lee. Beaches there have faced continuous closures over the past three years because of sewage contamination from the Tijuana River. But county health experts say they are now safe enough to swim in for now. CBS 8's Shannon Handy has more on what the mayor of Imperial Beach is saying tonight and which beaches are still closed. Beaches north of Seacoast Drive are open. The ones to the south, closer to Mexico, remain closed. Now, while this is welcome news, the mayor of Imperial Beach says this could change very quickly based on the pollution issues that still exist. Signs telling visitors to stay out of the water have been replaced with flags warning them about the strong rip current if they choose to go in. Let's go! <laughs> Imperial Beach resident Cara Robbins couldn't contain her excitement when she found out that after about a thousand days, the beaches are back open. The ocean is healing. It's healing. And when you can't use it, it's not healing. <laughs> so this is really going to bring the love back. Though she and other locals admit they've gone in from time to time, this makes them feel safer to do so. I have, but I've just been real choosy on which days I go. I think it's great. Over the weekend, the San Diego County Department of Environmental Health and Quality sent out a new report saying tests show water from Cortez Avenue to the end of Seacoast Drive now meets state health standards. This map shows open beaches in green. The red dots indicate one still closed. And we're very happy that our beach is reopened, our main stretch of beach, but the southern end of our beach is still closed. Imperial Beach Mayor Paloma Aguirre says this latest development is the result of several factors. For starters, there's been added pressure on Mexico to stop the flow of sewage into the United States. Recently, a pump station there was turned on, which has lessened it. Weather conditions have also helped, but Aguirre warns these beach openings are only temporary. It's very positive but it's hanging on by a thread. Should we get southern winds, south swell, or south currents, that'll change in a dime and we'll have our beaches closed again. Just this morning, Aguirre toured the Tijuana River, pointing out it's still polluting our waters. If there should not be any flow in the river right now. She says the solution is getting enough funding to build a facility here in the U.S., not Mexico, so that we can better manage the problem. We are at the mercy, basically, when it comes to this pump station of Mexico. Ideally, we would have one on our side that we control. Right now, there is no treatment in the river, and until we declare a state of emergency to divert and treat the river, we won't have permanent improvements at our beaches. County Supervisor Nora Vargas also responding, saying while this is positive news, having clean beaches should be the norm, not the exception. And like Aguirre, she says she will continue to fight for change. Reporting in Imperial Beach, I'm Shannon Handy for CBS 8. Thanks so much, Shannon. A local high school coach accused of sexual assault and posing as a massage therapist online was in court today. A readiness hearing for Christopher Preston was continued to a later date. A judge ordered that we not show his face in court. Preston is facing five felony charges after three women said he groped them during a massage. He was arrested earlier this month near the University City High School campus, where he also coached football. San Diego police investigators believe there could be more victims. San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria and other downtown leaders announced a new plan today to make downtown streets cleaner and safer. They call it the Five Point Plan. It includes a daytime police bike team made up of seven officers, a no-tent encampment policy on all downtown streets and sidewalks, 24 hours, seven days a week, and deploying a team to specifically deal with people suffering from mental health episodes. Today, we asked the mayor about the recent rise in violent incidents that are happening at night in the gas lamp quarter. We need partnership from all involved. Uh, but when people are throwing bottles and spitting on our police officers, those folks should be arrested and they should go to jail for a very long period of time. The mayor also says since the camping ban was enacted 14 months ago, the number of people sleeping on the streets downtown has dropped from about 1,700 to less than 900. A prime piece of real estate in Mission Valley is up for sale. The asking price, well, 
$215 million. The property is currently home to a ministry and features a luxury hotel and multiple conference rooms. CBS 8 Steve Price joins us live from Mission Valley with the details. Steve? And Marcella and Carl, there's definitely a lot for a buyer to like about this property. For one, easy access to freeways. It's close to a lot of major attractions, and it has that luxury hotel there. But experts tell me at $215 million, it is going to be a tough sale. Over 17 acres in Mission Valley, designed to be an unparalleled place to pray. This is the legacy campus on Hotel Circle South, envisioned by evangelist Morris Cirolo as an epicenter for his global ministry that had a worldwide following. But just four years after opening, the entire property is up for sale with an asking price of $215 million. After it was planned and designed, uh, at the point where it was just opening, he passed away. And his ministry was, um, was him. Gary London with London Motor Advisors was involved in the early planning of the project and says with Cirillo's passing in 2020, he's not surprised it's now up for sale. The Legacy Center's executive director sent CBS 8 a statement saying in part, Apart from the resort hotel, the Legacy International Center is underutilized and is not fully serving the primary purposes of the ministry. Worth $215 million? Oh, probably not. London says the property does have a lot of positives, including a 126-room luxury hotel and spa, expensive landscaping, and multiple conference centers. But he also believes the buyer will have to spend money making the property appeal to a more general market, and he calls the office space a non-starter. There's really no demand for office space. The, the office market is in worse, the worst shape that I've seen ever really in decades and decades. He believes a new buyer will keep the hotel, possibly expand it and add housing. My guess is that there will be a proposal to add on residential because that's the most attractive uh, opportunity in Mission Valley right now. He also believes the new owners will incorporate some of the expensive features, including stone imported from Jerusalem. And he wouldn't be surprised to also see a variety of new restaurants as part of the plan. By the way, once the property does sell, the ministry will not be closing, Marcella. Instead, they're just going to focus their efforts online. Steve, you mentioned there's a hotel, a resort on that property. Is that just for people who yeah. are attending events at the Legacy Center? Yeah, nice hotel. And no, Marcella, actually, you can just book a room if you're coming to San Diego to visit. And as I mentioned earlier, we're right in Mission Valley. This is a prime location. You're close to a lot of attractions. So the rooms are going for around $200 a night right now, plus tax. Pretty standard for this area. But at this point, no, anyone can book a room. You don't have to be here for a special event on the campus. Okay, interesting. Another option for people visiting. Thanks so much, Steve. Governor Newsom is limiting the use of smartphones during school hours. Just a few hours ago, he signed the Phone Free School Act into law. Assembly Bill 3216 will require that every school district, charter school, and county office of education create a policy limiting the use of smartphones in the classroom. They will have to do so by January 1st of 2026, so still some time to get a plan in place. The legislation will also support mental health, academic success, and the social well-being of students. San Diego County libraries are marking National Banned Book Week by displaying some of the books that have been banned or challenged throughout the country. The American Library Association says this year alone there have been more than a thousand titles challenged. San Diego County library leaders say no books are banned from their shelves. It's part of their commitment to give everyone the freedom to read whatever they want. Right now, state lawmakers are waiting on Governor Newsom to sign the Freedom to Read Act that would prohibit public libraries from banning books. The governor has until the end of this month to sign it. Right now, for the second time in history, the Latinx flag is flying outside the San Diego Unified School District headquarters. San Diego's largest school district raised the flag this morning, you see it here, in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. The student-led flag raising was accompanied with a mariachi performance. You can hear it right there in the background. And a student conference promoting Chicano unity and empowerment. Two men who helped save a man who was attacked by a shark off the coast of Del Mar earlier this year are being recognized for those heroic efforts. Kevin Barrett and Cameron Whiting are among 18 people being awarded the Carnegie Medal. 
That's North America's highest honor for civilian heroism. The two are credited with saving the life of Caleb Adams, who was bitten by a shark in early June. Uh, Barrett and Whiting rushed to Adams' aid and helped to get him back to shore where lifeguards were waiting. Adams lost a third of his blood, underwent emergency surgery, and had to spend three days in the hospital, but has since recovered. A San Diego native who helped take down a gunman inside a Colorado nightclub is also among that group of people being awarded a Carnegie Medal. Richard Fierro, who graduated from Mira Mesa High School and San Diego State University, helped disarm the shooter who opened fire inside Club Q. It happened in Colorado Springs in November of 2022. That shooting claimed the lives of five people, including the partner of Fierro's daughter. Nineteen other people were hurt. The gunman, who is the grandson of former assemblyman and Santee Mayor Randy Vopel, was sentenced to life in prison. When doctors say it is the best time to get your flu vaccine, that's still ahead. Plus, why the state of California is suing ExxonMobil in what's being called a lawsuit, the first of its kind. And later, the concerns over teens riding recklessly on electric bikes. We're working for you to get answers about what's being done about this potential problem. It was all about your location for today. So this is actually the view from our Mount Soledad camp. Closer towards the coast, you've been dealing with cloud cover. It's been very stubborn to entirely clear out. And then other areas inland, you've been dealing with heat and sunshine. I'll break down why.